Hello, good morning, and welcome to our today's celebration of the religious profession of Sister Chidima, who will be professing the Congregation of the Religious Sisters of Charity. We thank you and welcome you as we we'll celebrate this great day in the life of our sisters. Uh, for, to her family and friends and to all other sisters of charity who may be watching throughout the world. We welcome you to this uh, Eucharistic celebration. Thank you.
from aspirants, postulants, novitiate, Chidima has journeyed with different people. And it is those people <laughs> who have helped Chidima to reach this far. So we thank those sisters and those other people who journeyed with her. We also remember her family members, especially her parents, who were with her from the time she was born until she decided to take this vocation. We also thank Chidima for the people who have journeyed with her wildest information house in the Northeast. At this moment, we also would like to remember Father Leonard, who journeyed with her for the past two years as a spiritual director while in the Northeast. We also continue thanking the people who are with us now online following us from different countries, especially our sisters. That is our sisters from Scotland, England, Ireland, California, Nigeria, and also our other sisters who couldn't make it today who are also following us online here in Zambia, Zambia, Malawi, and the sisters who are present today here. At this juncture, I would like to invite Sister Claire to come, the sisters who have come from Ireland Yeti.
us pray. O oh Lord, who have inspired this, our sister, with the resolve to follow Christ more closely, grant her, we pray, a blessed end to the journey she has now begun, so that she may be found worthy to offer you a perfect gift <coughs> of life and service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. <laughs> Let my tongue cleave to my palate, 
if I remember you now. Lord, let my time take to my parents, if I remember you
that whoever believes in him should have eternal life. My dear sister, what do you ask of God and his church? I ask for God's love and a share in the life of this congregation of the religious sisters of charity. Thanks be to God. explained we we have this special ceremony uh, within the Lenten season but the fourth Sunday is a very special Sunday in the sense that it is called uh, the Sunday of joy the Sunday where we celebrate with joy because Easter is close and so during this celebration, we, we join with Sister Chidima, who is offering herself totally to God. She is making her first religious profession in the Catholic Church, offering her 
herself totally to God. As she writes in her own way, I offer myself free and all to God. And she's asking for nothing except love and grace from God. And so today, she will pronounce publicly three evangelical councils. Consecrated chastity, consecrated poverty, and obedience. The vow of chastity will help her to regulate her relationship with others and to offer her love totally to the church, to God, and to the congregation. Saving the poor with whole heart. Poverty is going to help her relate well with material things. The spirit of detachment, knowing that God is everything for her. She will share her life. She will share everything with the members of the community. And she will depend on the congregation and on the sisters in the congregation. Obedience is going to help her carry out her mission properly with the guidance of the church, the guidance of the superiors, and the guidance of uh, the sisters in the community and also in the congregation. If you were to ask her which one of the three is easier or most difficult, that will not go to us. She knows which one, according to, to her, she knows which one is most difficult. I think all of them are difficult. But we know as, as priests and sisters that obedience is becoming a little bit difficult, a little more difficult. And maybe poverty is becoming a little more difficult. And someone will say, no, no, but perhaps just the is becoming a little more difficult in the way we understand it and in the way we live it. And so today we ask the Lord that Chidima may offer herself totally, embracing these three evangelical councils. They will make you religious. If you don't embrace them, you will not become religious. And by the time you renounce them, uh, you stop being religious. I think that is true. And that's why you make a vow for a period. And on that very day, you have to remove them. Otherwise, they expire. And when they expire, you have to go. So they are essential for your religious life. Secondly, you are going to embrace the charism, the charism of the congregation of the religious sisters of charity, living according to the gospel of Christ and inspired by the spirit of Mother Mary Eichenhead, the spirit of service and saving your brothers and sisters with love, compelled by the love of Christ. Charism is like the core the core aspect of your life. You will not become a religious sister of charity without this charism. Saving your brothers and sisters with love. Offering yourself. Believing that you are doing it not for any gain, but because you are falling in love with Jesus Christ. You will save the poor 
uh, anywhere and at any time, whenever and wherever, with the guidance of your spirits. And so you, when you make your final profession, you remember your first profession. And even before that, you remember that you are guided by not just by the spirits, but also by your own system. And so you live in a community where life will be shared. And your sisters there will become your family. And uh, when you offer yourself today, you will take the community where you will be as your new family. Living as if they were your mother, they were your father, they were your brothers. Living as if they were your sisters. Your Something very hard, and it's only possible with a lot of humility and creating space for others to participate in your life and as you participate in their lives. Community life has also become a little difficult with a sense of independence now, uh, a, a life of kindness. A, a new culture has come into our religious life. That is becoming a little difficult to live as a community. Some cultures of independence, me alone and my God, has come in. The country, some communities are divided. Sometimes when you go walk in there, when you go around the you see that table, you know that this one is the top of the other, and the other one is the top of this one. When this one is cutting a job, only two are happy, the other side. And you know that there is a problem. <laughs> Community life for us, even as an African, is a source of life. It flows. You are connected to your sisters and you are nourished by their faces. And so you say to God, you carry out an apostolate. And that's another pillar of religious life. You carry out an apostolate as given, as given by the church. Somebody who walk into religious life and looking for a job, the job is already there. It's a question of saying, where to rise we, we have now a tendency of looking for jobs within the religious life. We have no jobs, we have simply an apostolate for service. And serving humbly. Novice in a religious life is a gift. I don't want to pronounce your sign normal. I was hoping we pronounce it properly. No. I'm not far from this one. Yeah, very close. Religious life is a gift. Consequences are already outlined. You have to reach out to your brothers and sisters and save them wherever you are sent. Sometimes it's very hard when those difficult moments come. 
I was touched just when you were coming in, when you were called by Sister Patricia, when you were walking in there with the assistance of two others. It reminds me of the origins of religious life. It has always, always been characterized by uh, marital features or marriage features. And you see some of those in, your, uh, in the ceremony. You are led to the altar of Christ. You are led to Jesus Christ by us, but in this case by your parents, your sisters. In the real marriage ceremony, you are led by your parents to meet your bridegroom right in church. And that's what we do. The bridegroom stands right in front. And the bride is led by the parents and they meet right there near the altar. And she is offered to the bridegroom. And that's what they have done. What is remaining now is the marriage celebration. Are you ready? In the marriage celebration, they will say, are you ready to take Jesus Christ as your spouse forever? And you will have to say yes. Now, in the ceremony, there will be a crucifix. That's the one you are going to embrace. <laughs> Not the actual human Jesus Christ with the two eyes and walking around, but you embrace the crucifix, where your spouse, because of love, died for you. And that's the one you take. And the religious life has a lot of meaning when you embrace that. And because you're going to say, Jesus Christ will be my spouse in times of joy, in times of sadness. In times of everything and in times of nothing. In times when you were in Nazareth enjoying the wine, I'll be with you. In times when you were in Capernaum uh, multiplying bread, I'll be with you. And in times when you were in the Garden of Gethsemane suffering because you are Lord, I'll be with you. And the times when you are crucified, I'll be with you. Ask the other sisters. How many have journeyed with their spouse up to the Calvary? Ask them. Not now, afterwards. <laughs> Most of us, religious life means Nazareth, Capernaum, Bethany, and not Jerusalem. And not even Calvary. Because there you have to allow yourself to be stripped. Letting go, letting go, letting go until you have only the will and the spirit. And the time when you'll be celebrating your golden jubilee at once, then you just say, Lord, everything is being given in service. I only have the will and the spirit I hand it over to you. And that is religious life. A journey with your spouse until the end. And that's hard. Ask the sisters who are here for many years. It's hard. But this is what you are taking. You just say, Lord, oh, this is what I want to be. This is what I want to be. And you are telling, you are going to tell your parents, Mommy, your mother, this is what I have become. Tell your, your siblings, this is what I have become. I'm now married to Jesus Christ, and our marriage is of joy. And so, I have embraced the passion of Christ by the crucifix. And later on, you walk in favor and sign the way we do when we have a marriage ceremony. The husband and wife, they walk up here and they sign in the book. And what it means, it is done. I will not come and say, I, I didn't. It is done. And so, two things. I don't want to say a lot of things, but just two things. Which come up uh, out, especially in the readings of today. The first one is faithfulness. Faithfulness. <coughs> and uh, 
the, the line that touches my heart is in the first reading. All the living priests and the people were exceedingly unfaithful. Mm. All of them. Priests, they don't mention sisters. They were not sisters. But all the priests and the, the people were exceedingly unfaithful. And the Lord was not happy with them. And they suffered. They went into uh, exile. They came back. Back into exile because they were not faithful. The Lord journeyed with them. Like you are to journey with Jesus. The Lord journeyed with them until the promised land. And when they got into the promised land, they were established. They had crops, they had land, they had houses, they had everything that they needed. They forgot about God. When they were established, they forgot about God. In the novitiate, you were saying, I think your, your responsorial son was, yes, sister, yes, sister, yes, sister, yes, sister. <laughs> now that yes, sister, from tomorrow, becomes a little difficult. Mm, yes, but. <laughs> and then eventually the but does not even come. You don't even respond at all. The more you get established in religious life, for some people, the more it becomes difficult to listen to others. I know it all. I know it all. I've been around for years. I'm now a veteran in the religious life. Who, who should I listen to? All the principles, the values, the ideals of religious life are gone. Just a shell. The veil. And some symbols of religious life. The rest is God. And what is in the heart? Anger. They don't like it. They don't like it. And it becomes stress. And from stress, depression. From depression, fatigue. And from fatigue, the ego exhaustion. And from there, death. <laughs> Faithfulness, faithfulness. Pope Francis calls it, he has a very beautiful term about lack of faithfulness in religious life. He calls it the hemorrhage of faithfulness. Hemorrhage. No hemorrhage. No. It's just, it, it's running away, it's like oozing blood, it's coming out into a shell of hands. Faithfulness now is an issue in religious life. Faithfulness. How faithful can I be in just small, small, small things? Helping my sister who is sick. Helping my sister who has just come. Helping my neighbor. That faithfulness. Keeping my prayers. Uh, five minutes, ten minutes, twenty minutes. How can I be faithful to everything that I learned in my, in my religious formation? Hemorrhage of faithfulness. The second one is love. Loving others, loving my neighbors, loving those entrusted to my care and love. And that is the, the founding principle of the congregation, compared by the love of Christ. For God loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. God loved the world. And for us, it's simply retaining that love. And that's why religious life is a responsible love. And so those two principles, those two aspects, will help you to grow and become what God wants you to be. You will need a good measure of faithfulness and love for you to function. You have chosen this life freely. You have discerned, you have prayed, you have consulted with others, and now you are offering yourself. Here I am, Lord, you are called me. 
Nothing will ever make sense without prayer. And through prayer, you will seek courage to persevere with Christ. Prayer now has become difficult because we are we are busy. The apostolate has taken much of our prayer time. You also find support uh, from your sisters in the community. But you leave all these after the spirit of your mother foundress. You will love and serve the poor with humility. When she was met with challenges, Mary Lightning had at times would say, and I quote, we must try to be truly humble, not in words, but in the way and in the very core of the heart. We must try to be truly humble, not in words, but in the very core of the heart. Your service should be characterized by humility. Without humility, you will grow uh, with pride. And pride, you will shut out others and even God. And that's our prayer today that you may remain uh, committed to what you have chosen. Your vocation is in you. You are the only one who heard the call. If you heard the voice, I'm not, not sure. But oh, we see signs of, of that call. And so we pray that you continue uh, on this path that you have, that you have chosen. In the end, we just want to pray for all the religious sisters of charity. We are praying for you today, praying for more vocations. I can see uh, some sign in the corner there. <laughs> we are praying for more vocations in the congregation. But praying for vocations is one thing. To support the young and fragile sisters is another. And rather than the other to pray for vocations is one thing. You need to pray for God gives vocations and when He gives you. To protect, to support those fragile young ones, for some of us it's hard. This work is not done yet. Actually, if I had a poster or put it on your chest there and say, I'm not done yet. Handle me with care. <laughs> She's not done. She's not. But if you expect her to do even miracles in the community, okay, she will make a lot of mistakes. The way you make mistakes yourself. Consider will make a lot of mistakes in the first few years of her life. But it's up to the elders to understand her fragility and her perseverance, the desire to become what the Lord wants her to become. I wish I knew the community where she was going. I would have said it to Now I have no idea. She has no idea to myself. <laughs> but wherever she is going to go, please put a poster on your door. Handle me with care. <laughs> <laughs> let us pray for vocations. But when God gives us the vocations, let us help them. Help them. Uh, to go and embrace the ideals, the principles of our fathers. Let us not forget the humble beginnings of the congregation when Mary Eichenhead was drawn towards the unemployed, towards the sick, towards those who were in prison, towards those who needed school. She was filled with a desire to serve the unserved. Let us not lose sight of the poor in our missions. Even when we design projects, this one is running this project, the other one is running the other project, do they have an aspect that has to do with the poor and the funeral? Or we have been sold to the rich and we have forgotten that. Sometimes it's easy. 
And we can forget uh, those entrusted uh, to our to our care, especially the poor. Let us find ministries and projects that are for the poor, not for the rich. Last day to the leadership team, I thought I should say something. Building a religious congregation means leaving no one behind. We are celebrating now the Synod of Synodality and we journey together. No one should be too much ahead. No one should be too much behind. No one should be thrown out of the world. Uh, and no one should be stepped up on them. And uh, it's a moment of introspection. In this region, who has been thrown out of it, left alone? Who has been trampled out? Who has been left behind? Who is too much ahead and almost pulling everyone by the nose? <laughs> Are we together? Are we moving as one? Well? Sometimes there are moments of tension, moments of crisis. And we must not be afraid of occasional struggles, disagreements, and crosses. Tensions will soon come, uh, crosses will soon come, but they are a moment of growth. And so we pray for you that you may continue uh, with the spirit of your families, building the congregation wherever it is, with your greater and greater presence, uh, saving the poor, especially those entrusted to your care. Let us pray uh, for all of us that as Chijima uh, makes her first profession, pronouncing those vows, we may also in our hearts pronounce them. We pray for you, uh, Chijima, that God gives you the love and grace that you need to continue responding uh, to this call. We also pray for your mother and the relatives back home that they may join you in this solemn occasion. They are praying for you, that you may not falter in your faith and in your love of God. Amen. My dear sister, you are already consecrated to God by water and the Holy Spirit. Are you resolved to be more closely united to God by the new bond of religious profession? I am so resolved. In your desire to follow Christ perfectly, are you resolved to live in chastity as a sign of the kingdom of heaven? To practice voluntary poverty? To offer the sacrifice of obedience? And under the guide of this sacred obedience, to devote your life to the service of Christ in the poor, the suffering and the underprivileged according to the constitutions? I am so resolved. May Almighty God give you his grace to fulfill your resolution. Amen. Lord, look upon this religious who wishes to imitate your son more closely by professing the evangelical councils in the presence of your church today. In your love, Grant that her way of life may bring glory to your name and salvation to all. We ask in this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
and eternal God. I, Chidima Concilia Wampo, called in religion, Sister Chidima Wampo, though on all accounts, most unworthy of appearing in your divine presence, yet, relying on your infinite goodness and mercy, and moved with the desire of serving you, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary and your whole heavenly court, vow to your Divine Majesty in the hands of Sister Patricia Lenihan, our Superior General, for three years, chastity, poverty, and obedience and also to devote these years under the direction of this sacred obedience to the service of the poor. Understanding all these vows in conformity with the constitutions of the Congregation of the Religious Sisters of Charity. I, therefore, Humbly ask of your immense goodness and mercy through the blood of Jesus Christ that you would receive this Holocaust and bestow on me abundant grace to finish it as you have already done to desire and offer it. Lusaka in the chapel of Roma convent on the 10th day of March in the year of our salvation 2024. Lord, bless this ring. Grant that she who wears it may keep true with Christ, her Lord and spouse. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bless, O Lord, Jesus Christ, this memorial of your passion, 
that it may be a perpetual pledge of victory to those who put their trust in you, who live and reign, world without end. Receive the image of Jesus, your spouse. Preserve it as a precious pledge of his love. Amen. Receive the Book of the Constitutions, which is your rule of life in this religious congregation. Show by your love of this congregation, your fidelity to prayer, your loyalty to the Constitutions, and your resolve to perfect in the coming years of prob probation what you have striven to learn during the novitiate, until you are ready to make your final commitment.
Lord God, with gratitude in our hearts we bring our intercessions to you. We know that you are with us always, our loving and faithful God. We pray for Pope Francis. May God give him health and strength as he leads God's family. We pray for the leaders of church and state. May they guide the people with wisdom and courage in the path of justice, progress and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious Savior. We pray for Sister Chidima. We thank you, Lord, for bringing Chidima to this day and helping her to respond to your call to commit herself as a religious sister of charity. Be with her as she continues her journey. May the spark of Christ's divine love age her onwards as she lives a vocation with generosity and faithfulness. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord gracious us. We pray for Chidima's family and loved ones. We pray in gratitude for all those who have guided Chidima on the path of life. Bless her mother, her siblings, and her formators. May those who have walked with her and helped her to reach this day always experience your protection and guidance in their lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. We pray for our congregation. We pray for Sister Patricia Lenihan and Sisters Geraldine, Jacinta, Kathleen, and Leticia, our congregational leadership team. Lord, grant them vision and hope so that we may walk together into the future. We pray for an increase of vocations to our own congregation and to the religious life, that people everywhere may come to know you and to experience your love. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious us. We pray for those who are poor, sick, and suffering. In the spirit of Mary Eckenhead, may we bring the love and tenderness of Christ to all who are in need, respecting their dignity and empowering their lives. We also pray for peace and justice in our troubled world. We ask the intercession of Mary, our mother, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your own Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious Savior.
God our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness to us and we entrust to you the desires of our hearts. We know that you will bless us abundantly through Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Yes, before. 
for you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chance and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chance to his disciples, saying, Take this out of you and drink from it. For this is the chance of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith.
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Thank <laughs> you. 
Let us pray. O God, who enlightens everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is well and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Good morning, sister. I think today certainly is the Tare Sunday. I think the joy here, I hope all those with us on the live stream are catching it. The joy, children, when you look radiant. And I think everybody is sharing in your joy. We are so happy for you. I have many people to thank. I will begin with you, Father Leonard. Father Leonard, I think, has become part of us as sisters of charity. And I have to admit that I personally am always so surprised. He is the National Education Secretary with such a, an enormous responsibility in the whole country. And yet, Father Leonard is always available to assist in things spiritually. He has been with us in KCC, he has been with us for retreats, he has given us spiritual direction to our novices, and on occasions like this, he joyfully comes and joins us. Father, we thank you, and we pray God's continued blessing on you.
at least the MENA has been the head of the team for these activities with the whole team. The choir. Where do we leave our choir? Our choir and our dancers. I think the choir this year has been a very special experience. It has been truly international. I think everybody has learned some new languages and some new words to sing some of the songs for the celebration today and also some new steps in dancing. And it was all done with such good humour and joy. Uh, those who need food, uh, those who need support. 
support uh, this particular time uh, of the year. And you have come at the right time uh, when uh, we need uh, more uh, of uh, prayers, spiritual uh, support, more of human support, more physical support, uh, but much more to strengthen the congregation in the region uh, so that they reach out to those in need. It's not been easy for them, especially those in Mam, the sister blessing, and the others at home, and um, those in Chukuni and so on. Um, so uh, it's strengthened them in their faith, in their resolve to continue uh, serving the poor. Uh, you are the center of unity now, uh, the center of, uh, of all what means to carry on with the principles and the ideas of, uh, of the families. Well, in you, they see the families. Uh, in you, they see the future of the congregation, the strength. Uh, in, in you, they see the growth, the expansion to reach out to different uh, missions. Uh, so we will be praying for you and we thank you for coming through uh, to visit us in Zambia, uh, especially in the Antidiocese of Osaka. Uh, I belong to this diocese as well, so we thank you for coming through and that you are here for, for this function. Uh, we will continue to pray for you and the, the team. You uh, can follow me, Sister Geraldine. Thank you for coming back home and you are most welcome. Now we will listen. The Lord be with you. May God, the inspirer of every good resolve, foster your purposes and strengthen your hearts, that what you have promised you may keep with persevering faith. May He grant you to hasten in the joy of Christ along the narrow way you have chosen, rejoicing to bear the burdens of your brothers and sisters. Amen. May the charity of good of God make of you a family brought together in the Lord's name to show forth the image of the Lamb of Christ. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here for these sacred rites, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Just speak to God.